Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. And welcome to another Intergeo presentation. I'm sure you've been to, to quite a few over this week. Um, today, we're going to be talking about all things Trimble tunneling, which is exciting. It's my one of my big passions. So uh, kind of strap in. And uh, today, we'll be kind of digging deeper into the different technology and then kind of the tunnel life cycle for tunnel surveyors and construction professionals and what they're doing and, and the tools they're using. So with that quick introduction of myself, my name is Riley Smith. I work on the product marketing team for our tunneling group here in Trimble, and I'm based in Westminster, Colorado in the US. And there's my email. If anyone wants to contact me after the webinar, feel free to send me an email and I would love to talk about anything tunneling, whether you have questions or if you have any projects coming up, feel free to shoot me an email. And so with that, we're going to dive into the content. So I'll start you off with, with our, our Trimble tunneling message, which is all about providing fast and reliable survey workflows for, for each stage of a tunnel project. And we'll go through those stages and in, in the different sensors and the different software that's, that's used in them. But that's kind of the message that, that we really try to drive with everything that we make. So the agenda for today is all about this transforming tunnel surveying and, and all the technology that's being used. And, and by looking at that, we'll, we'll look at the life cycle of, of surveying a tunnel from start to finish and the different tunnels or different technologies that are used in a tunnel survey. And then also some project examples of where that technology is being used today on tunnel projects. And at the end, we'll, we'll chat a little bit about um, what's gone on and what's new since last Synergio with, with Trimble Tunneling and the different products. And then I'll save some time at the end for, for questions and answers. So if you have any questions, feel free to type them into the chat window and, and I'll answer them as we go or I'll save it to the end. So feel free to, to ask them. All right, with that, let's dive into the content. So we'll start with the tunnel surveying life cycle. So there's really six different elements of this um, in my perspective. And, and we start in the upper left-hand corner with the project definition and control, where you're setting up the project, you're doing the initial site surveys, setting up the control and getting really ready for what will be the tunnel construction, which is our phase two where we're getting into more of the, the guiding of the equipment, the excavation, and supporting the construction process with survey and geospatial data. In conjunction with the construction process, TVM guidance is quite a important thing for survey professionals and making sure that boring machine, the also known TBM stands for tunnel boring machine, making sure that it's going in the right direction and, and staying on, on the design alignment. The fourth category in the bottom right is real-time or automated and convergence monitoring, where we're assessing movement trends both in and above and around the tunnel to, to make stakeholders and, and the public aware of, of any concerns or issues that may occur due to the construction process. And of course, really what everyone cares about in the end is the reporting the deliverables of the survey data, whether that's the over and under break reports for, for the excavation control, or it's it's a convergence report of the monitoring data. Really, that's that's the key key data that needs to be shared with stakeholders and, and engineers and owners and contractors. And then finally rounding it out, more on the operations and and really the 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 last end of the cycle is the inspection and maintenance where we're using geospatial data to, to supplement the process of inspecting and, and of being aware of the assets in a tunnel. So now with that, we're gonna dive more deeply into each of these phases and see different technology that's being used in them. So starting with project definition and control. Once again, this is really, this is the start of the project. Um, survey, survey technicians are brought in right from the start to do site surveys, to, to gather that data to help um, move into the design phase. So they might be doing that with RTK GNSS technology to collect that initial topographic site information. So they might be going out and measuring the different topographic features uh, in and around where that tunnel is being designed and get that to the tunnel engineers. 
from there, we move more onto the control aspect of, the, of this first phase where really every project starts and ends with accurate geodetic control using some type of robotic total station, such as the Trimble SX-10, where we need to establish a really solid geodetic control network that will be carried through the entire tunnel to ensure the accuracy and the construction process really can build in confidence. Moving on, now we have all of this initial site and control data. What do we do with it? Well, we need an office software to, to really pr combine and, and um, use that data effectively, um, and as well as process it to, to make sure that the, the data is, is, that we have confidence in the data from, from what was gathered in the field. And the, and the great thing about this with Trimble Business Center, which is our survey office software platform, is you can combine all of that different survey data, GNSS, total station, level, scanning, images, all in one package, along with tunnel design information and topographic surfaces, and you can have that all in one environment and, and use it throughout the course of the project. All right, so we covered the first phase, looking at project definition and control. Next, we'll move on to tunnel construction surveys. And, and this is one of my favorite parts of a whole tunnel process and really a, where the bulk of a lot of the surveying is done. So in the tunnel construction survey process, typically start with positioning the machinery that's doing the excavation or doing the drilling and the blasting. So, so being that guidance piece to ensure that the construction is meeting the design standards and, and that we're building the tunnel in the right space and the right spot. And this is a really important task for surveyors to do. So surveyors can leverage things like the Trimble S-Series robotic total stations, and as well as the field software. I think this is quite an important component of the tunnel construction process, is having a field software with efficient workflows that, that can semi-automate or automate different tasks for, for set out of blast holes, set out of, of rock bolts, uh, automatic collection of profiles of that as, that as built for over and under break, because that's really, um, really important to keep the construction process moving efficiently without with with the more manual based workflows where there's more operator intervention needed uh, it can hold up the construction process and, and really be be a kind of a detriment but with more efficient software workflows we can keep that construction going and also have the confidence in in the excavation and the design also in the tunnel construction process, one of the more important things is as we get into foundations and establishing a, a structure for it, we look at the, the process of, of adding more of the, the shotcrete for, for the kind of initial foundations and then getting more towards the lining where we're putting in rings or, or other types of, of finished foundations and, and ensuring that that's built to standard. So we can leverage the Trimble SX-10 for both the total station capabilities where we can measure and lay out points as we normally would and have that survey workflow, but also the scan, scan data opportunities where we can um, scan multiple sets of data over the, like, over the time of that construction and, and compare them for overbreak and underbreak and, and also do the shotcrete inspection so we can ensure layer thickness and we can and also look at lining to make sure that those rings are put in the right place. So really a lot of different things and, and using one system and, and not having to, to get all these multiple software packages or multiple instruments to do different workflows, but trying to have one system that, that does all of that construction survey. It's a hard, hard job and you don't wanna be lugging multiple cases of survey gear into the tunnel if you don't have to. And, and on, of course, mentioning Trimble Business Center on the left there about what to do with this data in the end. And really it's about reporting and, and gathering the inspection maps and the heat maps to, to verify that the construction process is meeting the design. And, and if it isn't, making those informed decisions with that data to, to go forward. And I wanted to show a project example. Um, one, one that I really like is of the Mumbai Coastal Roads project where Devashi Khan is uh, from LNT is using the Trimble S series with the TCU unit and, and Trimble Access and Trimble Business Center software to, to do the tunnel construction surveys. 
and and really a couple highlights from from a comment that he made was about the high speed of the system in the field so you have these semi and and, and automated workflows of collecting the as built as well as staking out uh, features such as blast holes and and having that more automated process which reduces the errors because there's less operator uh, intervention needed, but also reduces the time needed to do that workflow. Also user-friendly, of course, with any, when it's any survey software, we want to make it as user-friendly as possible and make those workflows efficient. And then my, my, one of my favorite parts of this is the one-stop solution using, using Trimble Business Center as the office software and Trimble Access in the field. So you have that one environment for data and seamlessly interchange design data as well as survey data between the field and office without worrying about losing any of that. All right, so we got through the tunnel construction process. Now we're going to move on to more TBM guidance, which is a part of the construction process, but kind of has its own niche survey um, techniques involved. So typically with these, these TBM systems, there's always a, a total station that, that's providing that information to the to the operator to, to make sure they're on the correct alignment. And, and really at the core of every one of these, these TBM systems or micro TBM systems, they, they have an accurate total station positioning and providing continuous and reliable measurements to the operator so they can stay online um, throughout the, the, the tunnel construction process. One example of this that I like to show is from China with CRCHI of a pipe jacking system where they've leveraged the Trimble S5 robotic total station as, as a rugged and reliable platform for getting that position and heading information and integrating it into their pipe jacking system. And really the power here is about that interoperability of, of any tunnel guidance manufacturer can take the Trimble instrument and leverage our Trimble Precision SDK to build it into their system. So really it's it's kind of a plug and play thing. You, you have the instrument and you integrate it into the software and now any guidance system can benefit from that, that, um, that platform that is the Trimble S series total stations. Now, moving on from TBM guidance to our fourth category is the automated and convergence monitoring. So really two different parts. And, and when I say monitoring, a lot of this has to do with deformation monitoring, where we're looking at uh, movement changes or position changes over time. So how that looks above the tunnel is about looking more at uh, critical infrastructure and, and safety of the public, public really, uh, during the life of the tunnel construction. So we're trying to ensure that uh, as the tunnel is being built, is anything moving? And, and if it is, is it moving with intolerance and, and alarming and aware, making stakeholders aware of that movement so they can make the public aware of if there could be any critical issues and, and really protecting safety of the public, workers, and, and ensuring that the contractors and engineers have the right data to make informed decisions. And this is typically done with automated systems that can be set up and, and live essentially on site permanently and continually feed that data to the contractor or the engineer or the owner um, or all of the above really and and that's the power of our Trimble 4D control monitoring system where we can have sensors and the communication and the software platform to con continually have that data flowing in and, and alarm anyone necessary of significant movements. A project example of where T4D and, and the Trimble sensors are used is on the Mumbai Metro as a structural health monitoring system uh, above where a tunnel was being uh, constructed. So several buildings um, that were at risk of movement were monitored with a variety of sensors, both geotechnical and geodetic. You can see in the image in the middle, a, a series total station set permanently on a building that's measuring a variety of targets on other infrastructure around and all that data is combined in t4d and and will alarm and alert stakeholders on any significant movement and you can see on the bottom right there an, an issue that was found by the monitoring system which was a, a starting to to crack in the building and, and having issues from kind of the significant vibration of the earth from the tunnel construction 
Now moving to the second part of tunnel, tunnel monitoring, which is the convergence monitoring, this is more about the tunnel itself. So as we build the tunnel and as it lives on uh, its life, the, the earth, earth around the tunnel causes stress and strain on it. And, and there's a certain engineering factor that allows that tunnel to converge or in on itself to, to the design standard really. So it's, it's, it's almost a behavior we expect, but nonetheless for the server, it's, it's a task of collecting that data to ensure that it's converging to the right tolerance and not out of that tolerance, because if it's out of that tolerance, that, that's, a, that's a safety issue and we need to know about that. And the contractor needs to know to make sure there's no workers and protect everyone in the tunnel. And, and really we can use efficient software workflows such as Trimble Access in the field to efficiently collect all of that data. So normally you would go with the total station and you would measure each point individually. And you might do that once a day, you might do that once a week and process all of that data. But with these, these more automated survey workflows, we can have that list of data and automatically have the total station measured to all those points. And once again, we're removing operator error we're removing manual need to, to move and point the instrument and really saving time for surveyors doing this type of workflow. And then once all that data is collected, it can be brought into an office software like Trimble 4D Control and those reports and, and analysis can be done to, to verify the convergence and provide that data to the engineer or the geotechnical uh, team. Project example is on the Hong Kong Metro where you can see on the right hand side there was targets installed in the tunnel every five meters all the way down the alignment and collecting those points on a on a regular basis and then analyzing that data all in t4d to understand how that tunnel structure is changing and and which points are moving more than others and making sure that it meets design tolerances so now we've talked about automated monitoring. Let's move on to the reporting and delivery. Really one of the, like I mentioned before, one of the important phases where we're looking at um, how do we take that data and, and report it and show it in a meaningful way, both in the field and office. So in the office, we want to, to deliver it in a meaningful way to stakeholders and with tunnel construction, this could be through over and under break reports. It could be progress reports and for survey data, it could be essentially laying out certain key features and making sure that they're staked to the right position. And that's really the important part is being able to have those reports to, to provide for both yourself as a surveyor and as a construction professional and as the, as the owner operator, the confidence that the survey has been done properly. One other really key point about um, survey data on tunnel project is sharing it and, and making it available to stakeholders. And, and this is a really prime application for Trimble Clarity, which is our cloud-based uh, data sharing platform. Essentially, I can take a large data set, the survey data set, such as this one on the right-hand side, which is a large mobile mapping scan and image data set. And I can share that with, with a stakeholder, the engineer, the owner, whoever it may be, and they can just view it in their web browser. They don't need a survey software. They don't really need anything other than an internet connection to, to view and benefit from that data. And it's really about transparency across the project of the, the survey data and, and progress of construction and so forth. All right, moving on to the last phase, inspection and maintenance. And this is about looking at the tunnel after it's been built and making decisions on the assets and, and the structural health. Uh, and we can use mobile mapping systems as, as an efficient platform to collect enormous amounts of data for tunnel infrastructure and, and really any corridor infrastructure. And so it can be a system mounted on any vehicle, can be mounted on a railway uh, cart, and we can collect all of that 3D geospatial imagery and, and points, and then use that for inspection and asset management purposes. So really being efficient with the collection, also safe with the collection, and then having all of that backup to make decisions on, on the health and the life lifetime of that structure. Not only this, not only the mold mapping side where we're collecting huge amounts of data over, over, long, over long areas, but also more detailed inspection workflows where we may be using 3D laser scanning sensors to efficiently capture tunnel conditions and infrastructure and help enhance that maintenance decision process where we can extract features from the software, 
uh, or from the, the, the imagery and the scan data in the software and, and help to make decisions on maintenance. And a project example of this, the Wolf Creek Tunnel in, in Colorado here in the US, or of using the SX10 to scan an image in an existing tunnel and diagnosing and, and somewhat automatically extracting different assets and features from that scan and imagery using Trimble Business Center and really defining the where and what of that tunnel to help the engineers make better decisions about what needs to be done for maintenance. All right, so we went through the whole tunnel surveying life cycle and, and we've talked about all the different phases and the different technology being used. And really I'm coming back to that, that message about Trimble Tunneling providing fast and reliable survey workflows for every stage of the tunnel project as, as we've demonstrated here. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about with the last few minutes here are the updates on, on some of the products in the Trimble Tunneling since the last, time, last Intergeo. So for those of you who are not familiar, the Trimble X7 3D laser scanner, we recently released uh, a, a new version of this software that incorporates the bold items, so the laser pointer. So now you have a really efficient survey workflow with this, this, this 3D laser scanner where we can simply capture imagery and, and high density point clouds, but we can also use a georeferencing workflow in the field and, and almost a survey-like uh, aspect to, to position the instrument and collect that data, as well as in-field automatic registration. So really simplifying that, that process for collecting tunnel data with the laser scanner efficiently. Um, so those are some new updates on that instrument. It's been out for a while now, but we have some new firmware updates and with the perspective software. And so looking forward to seeing people use that more and more in the tunnel space. Um, Trimble Business Center, our, our tunneling module, will we'll have a, a new version of this coming out soon. And I'm really excited for this. We have some great new tools that are coming out with, uh, with TBC. And one of those is the as-built to as-built inspection for different processes like shock creed, excavation control. It can even be more in the inspection phase where we're looking at the theoretical design versus the current status and getting a heat map and a report of, of, that, of that, um, those two comparison surfaces, the as-built and the other as-built. Uh, and this is really an exciting feature. And, and another cool thing about it is you can use any, really any survey data. It can be a total station or it can be a, a scan data set. So really whatever tool you're using, you can benefit from that. On the top right image is another really interesting feature that, that we'll be releasing, which is our tunnel point cloud classification. And the interesting thing about this is we can make, we're, we're already scanning tunnels and we're getting that data set. But the real time consuming process is, is segmenting and editing that data set to get really the only the data that you need. A lot of the time you're collecting um, a good chunk of geospatial data that you don't need um, that can be considered noise. So in a tunnel, this could be people, this could be machinery, uh, this could be the ductwork, a variety of other things that, that you might not care about for the survey. And so this classification feature will extract all of those and put them on different regions. So now you can have, in this case, the blue area, which is the tunnel surface, just that and use that for analysis and, and various reporting needs. We're also introducing tools to streamline the CAD to tunnel design. So this is about um, going from how the surveyor getting a design file from, from the designer or the engineer and getting that into the field so they can use it for stakeout, for as-built and different processes. And so we've built some tools in TBC where you can automatically create a, a Trimble tunnel design from, from this CAD or, or other types of design files. So really a, an improvement in, in speed and efficiency in the office workflow. And there'll be some various other um, inspection and selection tools that we'll be introducing as well. So stay tuned for that. And that's a really exciting release. Another thing I want to mention is data collectors. This is a big, uh, really important thing, maybe sometimes overlooked in tunnel surveying, is what's collecting the data. And, and some of these are, aren't new, but I wanted to mention them anyways to, to kind of show your different options for doing tunnel surveys. On the left-hand side, the TSC-7, which has been out for a few years now, really the king of data collectors, in my opinion, it's, it's that rugged, powerful data collector that really does everything and can be used with anything. While in the middle, we have the TDC-600, which is more of your light, versatile, phone-sized um, uh, a unit which can be used with GNSS and Total Station. 
As well, we have a mountain, mounting bracket to the S-series total station, which you can see in that middle image. Uh, and so it can be flexible in how it's used. Um, and then recently, uh, this week, we announced the TCU-5, which is our new version of our onboard data collector for the Trimble S-series total stations. Really exciting product about this. I know in tunnels, a lot of the time, you don't want to carry an extra data collector. This is a perfect um, complement to the S-series total station. And it's running on an Android operating system, so we're getting more better power, and we can run Trimble Access tunnels right on the total station itself. So with that, uh, I've come to the end of the presentation and I really want to thank everybody for, for joining. A couple things and, and items for everyone. Uh, I know we're getting to the end of Energia, so it might be hard to schedule one-on-one -on -one meeting with everyone uh, on the Trimble tunneling side of things. But regardless, you can feel free to send me an email and we can discuss outside of Energio about tunneling and tunnel surveying. Other option that I always recommend to everyone is if you have any questions, just contact your local Trimble distributor. They've got a lot of information and they'll be able to, to help you choose what's right for you on, on your tunnel projects. We're in terms of resources for, for the different Trimble tunneling projects, our products, I should say, um, we have a YouTube page that we're constantly adding great content to of how to's and different workflows. So if there's a there's a specific workflow for tunneling you're you're interested in, you can go onto that page and we probably have a video for it. And of course, we're also doing webinars uh, about different tunneling workflows. So you can find those recordings on the geospatial.trimble.com website. Uh, so with that, I'll leave my email up on the screen there and I'll take a look to see if there's any questions. Um, if anyone does have any questions now and they haven't asked them, feel free to type them in and I will answer them uh, as we go here with a few minutes we've got left. So one that's came in, <clears throat> excuse me, just going to take a drink of coffee. So the question came from Ahmed. What would you recommend to use on a micro tunneling project from these, from these systems for the construction phase? Uh, good question. Thank you for asking it. So with micro tunneling, uh, there could be two options there with that, really, um, depending on the type of uh, MTBM or micro tunnel boring machine that you're using. Um, that might have its own guidance system for for it. And, and then I would su suggest that the guidance system is really the, what pushes the machine along. But if you're also doing the survey workflow and you're helping position the MTBM or you're running the control um, down into the shaft to set up the MTBM or doing any other as-built, then Trimble Access Tunnels uh, field software is really what you want to use for, for those were in-field workflows. So that's what I would su suggest. So uh, I'll wait a few more minutes here. We've got some time for any other questions. Um, one question that, that comes up often is about um, using uh, scan data versus total station data, data in the construction process for tunnels and, and whether one is better than the other. And the short answer is, excuse me, is that there really isn't um, one better than the other. It's really about what is required. Uh, I typically recommend scanning for more high density applications. So Shotcrete is a great example of where, where scanning can bring benefit because we're getting such fine resolution across the tunnel profile that we can see all the different undulations in that Shotcrete surface and really get a great analysis of the layer thickness to make sure that it's meeting design tolerance. Um, and the total station might be more applicable to, to doing kind of spot checks and, and um, uh, doing minor excavation control, uh, and that's that's how I look at it, and and that's why I think the SX10 is a great robotic instrument for for tunnel surveying because you get kind of the best of both worlds and choose which of those two um, survey methods is correct for for the job. Cool stuff. I think with that we're we're almost at 7:30, so I will. I will end the presentation there. As I mentioned, if anyone has any questions, feel free to, to send me an email and I'd be more than happy to discuss them. And if not, everyone take care and stay safe and we'll hopefully see you all soon on, on a tunnel project somewhere around the world. All right, take care everyone.